Podcast. Good morning and welcome to another InvestorIdeas.com podcast, looking at cannabis news, stocks to watch, as well as insights from thought leaders and experts. Today we will be looking at announcements from Aurora Cannabis Incorporated trading on the TSX as ACB and the OTCQB as ACBFF, Kronos Group Incorporated trading on the NASDAQ and TSX as Cron, MYM Nutraceuticals Incorporated trading on the CSC as MYM, and Canna Royalty Corporation trading on the CSE as CRZ. But first, today, the RCMP, in partnership with the Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police and the Canadian Police Knowledge Network, announced that the new online training of cannabis legislation is now available for all Canadian police officers in both official languages. CACP President Chief Mario Harrell said the CACP is proud to support this proactive initiative and would like to thank the RCMP and the CPKN for leading the development of this online training product. With such a significant legislative change coming in October, it was important for the Canadian law enforcement community to come together, share resources for a common goal which will benefit communities from coast to coast to coast. The online course entitled Introduction to Cannabis Legislation is now available at no cost to all Canadian police services in Canada on the CPKN portal. The goal of this training is to inform and educate police officers in Canada on how consistently to apply the new laws to surrounding cannabis. Upon completion of the course, police officers will be able to identify cannabis in various forms and relate it to legal quantities, differentiate between the medical and non-medical cannabis regimes, recognize criminal offenses under the Cannabis Act, articulate the elements of powers of arrest for each offense under the Cannabis Act, and identify hazards as they relate to the environments involving cannabis. CPKN President Sandy Sweet explains, this initiative could become a best practice for future legislative changes impacting policing in Canada. Through this partnership, we were able to achieve a mass distribution of online training at a very low cost using existing resources and infrastructure. Next, moving to Aurora Cannabis Incorporated, who today announced that its acquisition of Anandia Laboratories Incorporated is now complete. The previously announced arrangement under the provisions of the Business Corporation Act of British Columbia means that, among other things, Aurora has now acquired all of the issued and outstanding shares of Anandia in an all-share transaction. Anandia is a world-leading cannabis-focused science company specialized in genomics, metabolite profiling, plant breeding, disease characterization, and cultivar certification, as well as providing testing services to producers and patient cultivators. Aurora Cannabis Inc. and Alcana Inc. also applauded the Ontario government on its new plans for the responsible sale of recreational cannabis products through government-operated online sales and the private sector. Aurora and Alcana have entered into a license agreement which, as soon as regulators permit, will allow Alcana to open retail cannabis stores under the brand name Aurora. Alcana has made considerable progress in preparing for this exciting opportunity as I identified over 100 potential retail locations throughout the province already. This agreement represents a significant competitive advantage and will allow for the rapid establishment of a robust network of cannabis retail stores that comply with all provincial and municipal requirements, making product, consumer, and public safety a top priority. Together, the two companies have the technology relationships and supply chain and retail expertise to quickly establish themselves. Next, looking to Kronos Group Incorporated, who today announced financial results for the second quarter ending June 30th of this year. Uh, some of the highlights included Kronos Australia was granted a medical cannabis manufacturer's license by the Australian Office of Drug Control in June of this year. Also in June, Kronos entered into a strategic distribution partnership with Del Pharma. Del Pharma is a pharmaceutical wholesaler with a distribution network of over 5,000 pharmacies and more than 200 hospitals that collectively reaches approximately 40% of the Polish domestic market. Under the five-year exclusive distribution agreement, Kronos will supply Peace Naturals, branded cannabis products for Del Pharma for distribution within Poland. Kronos Group previewed its premium recreational brand Cove at the May 2018 Lyft Conference. Cove was born in the Okanagan Valley in British Columbia, which is known for producing some of the world's finest cannabis. Cove trademark products are non-irradiated and hand-trimmed using only the best result of each harvest. By avoiding shortcuts like harsh refining processes, Cove trademark is able to maintain the natural balance of the plant across all the brand's terpene-rich cannabis extracts and bring the highest quality products to its consumers. On May, 
The trading of Kronos Group's common shares in Canada were uplisted from the TSX Venture Exchange to the Toronto Stock Exchange. Kronos Group's common shares are listed under the symbol Kron on both the NASDAQ and the TSX. Kronos also strengthened liquidity by raising $100 million of gross proceeds through a bought deal offering of common shares in April of this year. And as of June 30th, total liquidity was $118 million, which provides Kronos Group significant runway to execute on its strategic priorities. The second quarter of 2018 revenues totaled $3.4 million as compared to $0.6 million for the second quarter of 2017, representing an increase of $2.8 million or 428%. Uh, second quarter of 2018 cannabis oil sales accounted for 40% of domestic medical sales. And finished good inventory and biological assets increased by 46% quarter over quarter to 2,451 kilograms as the company focuses on building inventory for the adult use market. Next, going to Canada Royalty Corporation, a leading North American cannabis products and brands company, today announced the closing of its previous announced sale of Canada Royalty's exclusive Canadian license to use and commercialize the pre-roll technology developed by Wagner Demas to Aurora Cannabis Incorporated. Canada Royalty's exclusive Canadian license to use the commercialized pre-roll technology was valued at $7 million at the time of execution of the binding term sheet. The purchase price is settled at 756,348 Aurora Cannabis common shares, which have now been issued to the company. The value of these shares based on the closing price of the Aurora Cannabis common shares on August 13th was approximately $4.48 million. And finally, looking at MYM Nutraceuticals Incorporated, who announced it has engaged its well-known tourism and recreational expert, Sylvain Audet, to develop the concept of the Canna Centre in Wheaton, Quebec City. The Canna Centre is associated with the company's 1.5 million square foot medical cannabis greenhouse complex currently under construction in Wheaton, Quebec. The Canna Centre will host a research centre, a training facility, an auditorium for cultural and scientific activities, a hotel, a restaurant, medical cannabis interpretation center, and a medical clinic. Mr. Audet will work in close collaboration with the Sherbrooke Historical Society to develop the concept of the Medical Cannabis Museum as part of the Cannabis Center. Mr. Audet is tasked with the identifying the primary, indirect, and complementary clientele targets to suggest services and activities complementary to the project's infrastructure and evaluate the profitability of the overall project. That's all for today's podcast. Podcast is now a certified word trademark on the blockchain through Cognate Incorporated CM certification. Investorideas.com podcasts are also available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play Music, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and TuneIn. If you'd like to be a guest or a sponsor of this podcast, please contact Investorideas.com. Investor Ideas reminds all listeners to read our disclaimers and disclosures on the Investorideas.com website. This podcast is not an endorsement to buy products or services or securities. Investors are reminded that all investments involve risk and possible loss of investment.